gets late at night, pitch dark outside and too dark for the TV camera. But we are shooting anyhow because life does not happen in just the right light and just for the camera. And life is happening here in this remote village in West Bengal's Midnapur district, 200 kilometers from Calcutta. Those who could never hope to read are making a desperate effort to learn. About 40 persons are gathered here in a veranda, men and women between the ages of 14 to 60 years. There's one instructor and he manages to pull up anybody who's wasting time or about to sleep. Take a close look at the instructor. We'll tell you why in a few moments. Now and then somebody shivers. It's very cold. It's cold, of course, and I'm tired. I've worked in the landlord's field for 15 hours today and I have not eaten, but I come here to read. Will my life change? I can't say, but this is my only chance. Why do you study here? I like to study, that's why. Didn't you go to primary school? Why? We are very poor people. It was not possible to go to school. While these learners are absorbed in class, others are at the village kerosene shop buying oil for their wick for 25 paise or for one rupee. And the next morning we see Biren in the field with his cows, a book in his lap. This is an incredible sight and we almost decide not to take the shot. It appears to be so posed. It's true that it is an incredible sight, but not a rare one in Midnapur these days. This district of revolutionaries and freedom fighters has been seeking out each illiterate since 1990 and trying to teach them. The district has a population of 84 lakh persons and about 20 lakh could not read or write a year ago. But via this program, how much will they really learn and remember? Before we answer, there's another basic question. Who are the illiterate and where do they stand in life today? There's a class in our village. The master has asked me, but I don't go. I don't go, I don't know anything, and I cannot learn anything. There's something inside which holds me back. Do you think this class could help you cross the poverty line? Yes, I went to get my share in the poverty scheme. I wanted to go to the government officer, but I was nervous. He took my share. I have a deep pain because I work so hard, but I'm so poor. I see blood in my eyes sometimes. Blood. I just keep an eye on wage work so that I earn something for my children. That's all my eyes are fit for. I could only learn to speak. That's what my parents taught. I won't survive because I'm a fool, a fool, like grass or radish. That's how people have kicked me around. The government offers things, but I can't use them. I've only taught my children to speak. They will also become fools. Every day I tell them to go to school. But the children say we are hungry and I buy a biscuit. But by the time they reach, the master has already locked the school and gone because no children came to school.
regular little marches by school children up to today and popular street plays here's a play about superstition a wife insists on buying a black sari that she likes soon a telegram arrives the illiterate husband assumes that the telegram contains news of his brother's death due to the black sari and beats the wife without mercy she commits suicide later somebody reads the telegram which was about the birth of a son the husband is in agony and the mystical baul minstrels sing of this dark life and promise a world of light to those who learn Today there are 80,000 classes running in about 6,000 villages of the district and over 12 lakh persons are attending class at this moment down from a peak of 17 lakhs a few months ago learners gather in groups of 10 often more there are many more men than women learners and women gather in the afternoon for the 9 to 14 year olds separate classes are held to prepare them for school learners read words which have a profound meaning in their lives the next lessons raise key questions why are we poor is there a difference between persons of different religions how can children be saved and what do the learners think of this teaching why are you learning I learn because I like it. Will you get something? What can I get from this? Money, for instance? No. Nayak works as a wage laborer. I want to say you people should tell the landlord to pay a laborer less wages if he does not attend class or you can tell them not to give such a person any work that's the only way we will learn and we must learn laborers who migrate in search of work quite often take their instructors along Fisher folk who keep unpredictable and long hours are not forgotten by the literacy program. They too are trying to catch the world of letters. From water to land and to the vocation of sericulture where numerous women and men labor around the year and are now learning around the year too. But do literacy classes touch matters of life and death? 
This mother's child was dangerously ill and sinking fast. She was running, perhaps to the Vaidya, perhaps to the health center. We don't know if the child survived. So what does literacy mean to her in a moment of such anguish? The literacy program has a novel component of education on health, especially children's health. And they've combined the immunization program with literacy classes, where they discuss the hazards of not immunizing. And what does the district doctor say? <laughs> Just the other day I saw a mother in a bus. Her child had diarrhea and she was taking her from the village to the hospital. And the child had a bottle of oral solution in her mouth. This is really a breakthrough because the child would have died of dehydration. And to match the growing awareness, the government and voluntary agencies have streamlined their cold chain infrastructure so that vaccines are at hand when the children turn up. Classes are held six days a week for one to two hours a day. And although they are planned for five months, classes have stretched to a year or more. Who teaches the illiterates of society? Every teacher is a volunteer, a local woman or man who has studied at least up to class seven. You are teaching without payment, although you could earn something from private tuition. Why? It's true I would earn something, but it's my responsibility to society. They will learn to read 30 words per minute and to write five words per minute. That's my aim. But why don't you spend your time earning something? I only teach for two hours a day. The rest of the time is free to do what I want. Is it difficult to teach the illiterate? There are so many interruptions. Transplanting, harvesting, puja, floods, elections. Once they stop coming to class, it is very difficult because they forget very fast. Then they don't want to come. Then I go to their homes and bring them back. Aren't you raising expectations of a job by making them literate? A job is not all. They will need to fill bank loan forms, ration cards, make claims for homesteads, write letters, read letters. That's the aim. Have you got a regular job? No, I'm employed. I'm no, I'm unemployed. I've tried at many places, but I've failed to get a job. I'm unemployed, but my job is not a factor. Now I think it is most important to organize these people, and then they will be able to solve their own problems. That gives me so much satisfaction. What do you get from teaching? I feel such pleasure in watching the progress. Yesterday somebody read the headlines from a newspaper. Their enthusiasm gives me hope for my own life. I'm jobless too and my day did not have a focus. Now this class has given me a routine and I prepare for those two hours and finish all the household work before that. This routine reminds me of my school days. An active life is sometimes cut short by fate. Dashrathi is a graduate and had a steady job. But Ten years ago, he developed symptoms which were later diagnosed as leprosy. He resigned his job and withdrew to an isolated life in his village home. He knew that his condition was not infectious, but the village was not convinced. <laughs> It was very painful to be rejected by everybody. 
I thought of ending my life. But my family was with me. And then came this literacy program. I gave my name to the panchayat member as a volunteer teacher. They accepted. But the learners would not come. Finally, one or two came, and I taught them that leprosy is not infectious. The word spread, and now I have trouble stopping new ones from joining. Several agricultural laborers are teaching illiterate workers, but clearly these are all committed volunteers. The fact is that many volunteers drop out midway. How are these volunteers selected? Selection is conducted at the village and panchayat level. Panchayat members ask people to volunteer to teach, meet them, and take the lists to the panchayat president. The president takes the lists to the block development officer. Are there enough volunteers and have all political parties been consulted? We'll release the funds in a day or two. Please start the program on a war footing. About 1.9 lakh volunteers applied and they were then trained for a week by master trainers who are local persons with university education. The master trainers are also volunteers. The training focuses on how to handle illiterate adults and volunteers raise key questions about our society which breeds illiterates. But do little children gain anything from this program? Children below the age of nine who should be in primary schools, what does life bring them at the moment? Do you eat anything before you go to school? No, I don't eat anything. When do you go to school? At 10 o'clock. Do you feel hungry in school? No. When do you eat? In the evening I have rice. While children put up such a brave front, we know that hunger prevents lax from going to school. And are children shy about school because they don't have proper clothes? I had two sets of clothes, but now I have one. Do you go to school the day you wash your clothes? If the clothes dry, I go to school, otherwise I don't. I used to go to school, but I've left now. We have a cow, and now I have to take it for grazing. I left on my own. My parents did not ask me to leave. But we notice a change, because in this group of children, there are also those who have started formal schooling because their parents, who are in literacy class themselves, now are convinced that the child must learn while still a child. This mass literacy program is touching the lives of millions in Midnapur, in towns, markets and villages. But are people's bodies involved in the program? Every village has selected representatives to form a village committee. They hold weekly meetings and review the progress of learners, the punctuality of teachers, the situation about books and maintain minutes. Village committees inform the panchayat level body, which is linked to the block committee. At the apex of the supervision is the Zilla Parishad or the elected district council. Political parties have played a very active role in the program. Their cadres have identified the illiterate and found volunteers to teach them. But these parties are traditional rivals. And have they really come together for this campaign, or is the partnership artificial? Artificial uh, was in the earlier stage, but in the later on, all were mobilized. 
There were many conflicts between parties and earlier our workers used to feel they could not work effectively. At our suggestion, the district administration sat down with all the political parties and we sorted out our differences at every level for this campaign. Why did you have to wait until 1990 to launch this program? Your party has had good cadres in the district for decades. So why did you have to wait for the government to announce such a program? Why didn't you do it on your own? We did it on our own. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we were enthused from the achievement of Ernakulam, uh, Kerala. And from that point we started uh, doing government uh, came for our help also. It, uh, it is not true that only for, for the government or initially it was only for, from the government. Is this program going to be a success or not? Oh yes, it will be a success. We are uh, uh, bent upon uh, taking the uh, action. Political parties are optimistic that illiteracy will be wiped out and each party is claiming credit for providing primary leadership. Whoever is the leader, each party is working closely with the district administration which monitors the program like a war operation from a day and night control room at the collectorate. Why do you think government is necessary for this program? Because all the volunteers do all the teaching and the people do all the learning. No, it is actually people's program. Government is only a facilitator. That's all. There's a high incidence of the educated unemployed in West Bengal as a whole and in Midnapur. Won't the neo-literates start looking upon themselves as the educated unemployed and won't this cause frustration? No, this is very clear from the beginning. This education is not to give them a job or get a degree. This is just to empower them so that they can function and understand their life better. You say that women are adopting family planning measures because of the literacy classes. How can you say that when most of the instructors are men and they are not able to talk about family planning to women? No, actually what we have achieved that in our this literacy centers and post-literacy centers, we are sending the government extension officers. So if you have a literacy center comprising only women, maybe even the teacher, the volunteer is a male, but maybe once in a month the health worker, the lady extension officer of health, who is called a health assistant, she goes to the village, meets them, discusses the problem, clarifies the thing, and uh, their uh, the knowledge increases. You had set a date earlier this year for declaring Midnapur totally literate. Why don't you do so? Do you have a problem about such a declaration? No, actually we are not uh, for this declaration only. You have not started this program only to have a declaration that we have achieved 100% literacy. We don't believe in this philosophy. Actually, we want our people to be able to read and write and comprehend and utilize it in their day-to-day -day life. So, even after they are all have the acquired the basic minimum level of learning status, unless you are sure that they have retained it, they are utilizing it, no point in having a declaration just for the sake of it. We will see that so many people are already in the post-literacy classes. They, have, they, have, they are utilizing their knowledge and then maybe we will declare as a part of our intermediate target. Government and voluntary agencies have prepared books for the newly literate, diverted anti-poverty and development schemes to them, and all extension personnel of all departments will be expected to take literacy classes in the future, where they will give vital information on their schemes. We strongly believe that democracy is not just merely casting vote once in five years. They have to be involved with the process day in and day out. And that is the involvement which can come only if we empower them and they also clearly see where they stand and what are their problems, how they can make their own fate change. The government is spending 20 rupees to make a person literate, but the people of Midnapur are themselves spending 10 times that amount. They are teaching free and they are mobilizing all resources. A wall covered with black suit for a board in one village a board made by a local carpenter in another village. The people of Midnapur are not content with declaring the district totally literate, although they could do so soon. They want deep-seated changes in the minds of the illiterate, so that the illiterate make a value shift from dependence to self-reliance, from fear to fearlessness. Freedom from fear. This is what lakhs of illiterates in hundreds of other districts are also waiting for today. <laughs>